Friends Kitchen. I'm Vicki Harris, the host of this show today. And I'm telling you, we've got an unusual one for you. As I promised going along, we were going to cook with many different people. We were going to talk to pet authorities and just pet lovers. And I've got a couple of pet lovers with me today. That's very unusual for you. As you can see, I have two of the best Grand Old Opry members with me. Yes, that's true. Two Slim <laughs> and Mike Snyder. Now they're both like, oh, uh, I don't cook. I, I guess Mike, I don't. Do you cook, Mike? I can throw some stuff on the grill. Okay. I like the cage is on fire, I can just run off with the <laughs> light of it. Yeah, there you go. Pretend like that never happened. Yeah. What about you, Tuesday? Well, I don't call myself a cook. I am a dad who can make dinner. There you go. Yeah. That works. That yeah. works. And a breakfast. Okay. And that's what Nothing we're gonna. Fancy. That's what we're gonna try to teach you today yeah. is to cook something for your pets because you've got your baby with you. He's got precious little dog named Luna that you're going to meet in a little while. Yeah. And then we're just trying to educate Mike here a little bit, you know, That's on, good. on the... I'll, I'll feed it to my imaginary dog. <laughs> that, right. He loves animals, loves to support Music City Animal Rescue, but he said, I, I don't currently have one. I said, that's okay. That's all right. We want to have you on and, and just kind of talk about all this good stuff. Now, what I did... Was, Do you have a cat? I've had several cats and several dogs, but the clay trucks keep getting them out there in front of the house. <laughs> Yeah, I've, got, I've got a furry, furry spot out there on the pavement. <laughs> Maybe I should have brought some of them up here. We're going to throw them in. Put them on the pot. Oh, no. Okay. That would be another show. Yeah, really. That's That'd another be show. Cooking roadkill. The roadkill. Road yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, this is a roadkill. This is chill. This is high high quality. Yeah. USDA. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You're going to cook this stuff for a dog. Is I right? am going to cook it for a but dog. for the family. Yeah, well. and we adapt a lot of different recipes. So I was talking to Two Slim. I said, "Well, any good cowpoke probably likes, <laughs> yeah, likes chili." And he says, "Yep, I guess we do." And yeah. I said, "Well, let's yeah. try to adapt that where you can feed some some of those portions of those ingredients to your dog as well." Well, the dog sits when we eat. The dog sits right there, right next to us, and looks at us mm -hmm. the whole time. Like where, where's mine? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is kind of how you can give him some of that and not feel bad about it. Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk about ingredients first because... She's not picky. No. And that's the good thing. When you're cooking for your pets, you can't really hardly do it wrong. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not going to tell you, um, that meat's overcooked. Yeah, lettuce. You know? She won't eat lettuce, but about everything else is good. All right, all right. I found if you, with the animals I've had, if you, you know, hold off for a couple of weeks, they'll eat a tennis shoe. <laughs> 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 That's right. <laughs> I haven't eaten in so many days. I don't care what it is. <laughs> when, I, when I cook for the band, that's the way I look at it. You get hungry enough. You're going to eat. Lily, turnip greens, uh, walnuts, just whatever. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought the whatever up because we're going to talk about an unusual ingredient in this chili, too. Okay, now, first of all, as you can imagine, I want to talk about some things. Um, the meat part of the chili, the most important oh. part of it and everything. Um, I've already got some of that browning. You can use anything. Now, you can use turkey, you know, mm -hmm. you can use, you know, make turkey chili. You can use ground pork. You can use regular beef, whatever you want to use. That right there is actually a mixture of beef and ground pork. Wow. So it's going to uh, it's gonna taste a little bit different, but it doesn't have as much fat to it. And that's why I like to put pork in there. Just something a little bit different. You can also use turkey. You're not going to know the difference because by the time you add the seasonings, yeah, I do. I make that for meatloaf. Yes, pork and, and beef together. Mm -hmm. It's really good. And inside it, and tip right there. There you go. <laughs> and they call it the other white meat. Yeah, you know, kind of like chicken or whatever. Yeah. Okay, we're the other white people. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're the other. Oh. <laughs> Country folks. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was afraid. I said, oh, Mike's going to be with us today. I'm from Texas, and I have a very deep southern drawl anyway, and I get around Mike, and boy, it really comes out. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. Well, I'm just a Yankee. I'm watching it all go by. There so. you go. <laughs> that's where I want to be. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, beans. That's the important ingredient. Can you feed beans to your dog? Yes, if you stand the gaze. There. And that's the truth. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with feeding them beans. It's a really? good source of protein, high uh, soluble fiber. 
So it's good. If Normally you want to cook them fresh, use dry beans or something like that. If you want to use canned beans for time's sake, even if they get no salt or low sodium or whatever it is, open that can, rinse the beans just as much as you possibly can. Really? Because it rinses any of the preservatives or any extra sodium or anything on it off of them before you use it. I haven't been doing that. Right, that and you don't I've use the juice. My beans. I know she dogs ain't going to swell up. <laughs> Because you don't rinse your beans. <laughs> <laughs> and Add low sodium, and then you got to have a base. <laughs> I promise we'll get through this. <laughs> you got to have a base, which is tomato base or some sort, you know, for you. There you go. It's, it's yeah, obvious. It's obvious. Um, did you know like that obvious. if you use tomato paste instead of like tomato sauce, a lot of people will use just tomato sauce in there. If you use tomato paste, and use something else like a low sodium broth, and I like to use oh. beef broth. Tomatoes kind of acidic, you know, yeah. for your dog. Even for us, if you have an ulcer or anything like that, maybe you don't want to use as much tomato stuff because it, it irritates your ulcer. If you'll dilute it with either beef broth or chicken broth or something like that, you take that acidity out of it, and there is a whole lot less sugar. There's a ton of sugar in tomato sauce. Mm. If you're diabetic and you use tomato sauce, you're going to up your sugar content. Wow. But if you use tomato paste, that's better. So that's kind of what I do is I use tomato paste. Then for the dog's sake and for our sake, I'll kind of dilute it down with a little bit of broth. broth. Vegetable broth can you use? You can use vegetable broth, broth as well. Yeah, yep. Any of those are just fine. Hmm. Now, I also use crushed tomatoes. Yeah. I'm going to use some of those. Got to have a little bit of that in there. Mm -hmm. Now, remember we were talking about weird ingredients and weird things. A tennis yeah. shoe. Well, this is not a tennis shoe. <laughs> you know what it is? Beets. Beets. Oh. There you go. Yes, sir. Now, I've seen them. <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> All right. load of them. Yeah. They're not pickled. They're actually, I bought them frozen. You can buy frozen beets all swirled up and done yeah. like this. Oh, I like those swirled up stuff. I one. have butternut squash all yes. swirled up. Mm -hmm. and it's just like pasta, you know. Oh, it's fine. It's really good. It's got a lot of beta carotene in it, a lot of fiber, and you can sneak it in your chili. You don't know it's there, but it adds to it. It adds just a little bit of sweetness instead of a, some people will put like sugar, that. you know, in there. See, so you can. Mm. How about good that? Dirt. that. Dig. A good dirt. It's a root vegetable. Yeah. It certainly yeah, is. It tastes like dirt, all right. I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Well, I, tell people, you I work with people that hate peaches. Really? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. just don't like it because... They can't, they can't stand the sight of it. I can't stand the sight of people that can't stand peaches. <laughs> <laughs> Pickled otherwise. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a break. Okay. We'll get all of our ingredients together, and when we come back, we'll put it all together for you. I'm Dr. Kayla Mitchell at Paris Veterinary Clinic. Did you know that grain-free diets can actually be harmful for your pet? With the recent fad and grain-free diets in human medicine, a lot of people are putting their pets on grain-free diets and unfortunately we've had a large increase in, in dogs and cats with heart disease that's related to grain-free diets. So if your pet is on a grain-free diet right now, I encourage you to go speak to your veterinarian and make sure that that diet is okay for your pet. And if you want to do some research in the meantime, you should visit the statement from the FDA that talks about dilated cardiomyopathy from grain-free diets. And if you have concerns, please talk to your vet. Here we are. We are back again with Best Friends Kitchen, Mike Snyder. And two slim from Riders in the Sky. Howdy. All righty, we're going to start putting all of our chili together. Oh boy. Yeah, here we go. And I'm going to do this unless somebody else wants to take a shot at it. I'll tell you, why don't you put it in there and I'll van a white it. All right, I'll okay. I'll point at it as you all right. do it. I as can we stir do it. I can, I'll be glad to stir All right, it. then let's go like this. Okay. There you go. All you right. stir and I'll dump and you Pour van a white. Thing. All right, the first thing we're going to put mm. in there. Oh, it smells good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is let's go ahead. <laughs> yep, yep. All right. Yeah. And we have tomato paste, as we talked about, yes. that we would use instead of tomato S sauce. sauce. Mm -hmm. So this is probably about a half a cup. Mm -hmm. And you may have to go like that oh, yeah. for me. There you go. 
Got a lot of that. Tomato paste got a lot of suction. It does. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. want to come out of there. Well, it's a, it's, I'm a paste man myself. I like the paste. I That's think good. it. I think it has a little bit stronger flavor. Actually. I do too. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, what you have to do, you have to dilute that. Now, yeah, why are we diluting it? We're diluting it for two reasons: the acid in the tomato. Sure. And then also the acid for your dog. You're going to dilute that down a little bit. Here we go. This yeah, is yeah. low sodium broth. Sodium broth. Right. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and put the whole can in. Good right. right. idea. Yeah. Trick. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Keep right. on going. I'm more like dog food all the time. <laughs> <laughs> have you <laughs> have you studied nutrition? Is that why you know I all did. this stuff? For about two years, I actually my vet is Jim Ed Brown's son-in-law. Is that right? Uh huh. And Dr. Mike Corwin, oh. and um, actually I went to him and talked to him about it because we had a couple of dogs that were having digestive issues and yeah. everything. I said, "What else can we do?" I said, "I looked it up online because I was googling everything," and I said, "It says that you can make food for your pets." And I said, "I've got some dogs that have got." you know, issues eating the commercial brand pet foods. Yeah. He said, you can, but you have to make sure that it's balanced. If you do it, you have to know what ingredients are good for a dog, what's not. They are what's called, they're like we are, they're an omnivore, which means they can eat pretty much anything. A cat. That's my dog. Yeah. She can eat anything. Just about anything. Yeah. Some of them have cast iron stomachs that they eat tin shoes and things that they shouldn't eat. But for the most part, they're like us. They have really long digestive tracts. So that really? means they can eat Things like uh, pasta, anything with grain or anything like that. But a cat is what's called an obligate carnivore, which means that they have to eat meat because their digestive tract is really short. Yeah. So when you're. That explains a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's in and, and yeah. out and there the you carnivores. go. Carnivores. Yeah. The only, the only reason we're not being prey is, is 80 pounds. If they weighed 80 pounds, we'd be running around all the time trying to get away from them. I'm telling you. We were, you were talking them. about the cats. Mike was telling a story but about they're the They're not like cats. dogs. Dogs will be your friend, even if they're big. That's right. But the, you, cats will eat you. Uh, yeah, and if you have a lot of them, I always, we, yeah. I have a lot of cats because naturally I foster and have the rescue and everything like that. Well, when it comes time to feed them and they all come running at you, you just pray to goodness you don't slip and fall, you yeah. know, because they're going to be on you too. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so here we go. We got that in there. All now, right. the next thing we talked about, beans. Beans. Yes. Yes. The glorious beans. Yes. To have beans in chili. your chili. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Well, now, some people say no beans in chili. You know, I like it either way. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Well, I like it with beans. In I Texas, they're, they're, Texas, they're fussy about whether it has beans or not. Depending on where in Texas you're from, right? Yeah. 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 A lot of them say no, no beans. You go too far south, they don't put beans in the chili for. Yeah. But you yeah, know, I'm I'm from Dallas, so I was doing beans. Yeah. <laughs> but beans in there. And I've got two kinds of beans actually. I've got pinto beans and black beans. Wow. Okay. So we're gonna put both of those in there. And did you rinse them off? Before I rinsed you them a little in? bit. That's yes, good. I sure did. You all know, right. so there's no juice from the can or anything in there. You just rinse all that off. Well, we're getting a little bubble action here. Yeah, and it's starting to actually look like chili, yeah, right? It okay. sure is. Now, sure is. I for I'm doing the dog portion, the pet portion first, because you're gonna when you get to a certain point, you're gonna have to take that out because chili's not chili without all these spices, mm. and that's one thing that you don't want to give to the dog. Oh. I'm gonna leave out the tomatoes because my experience, especially if you have smaller dogs. Now, larger dogs they don't really get it. Smaller dogs are kind of fussy about textures and, and things like that mm -hmm. and I've seen them spit a tomato like across the room. They're right. they're eating it and they go Pleh. you know they just don't want it. That's an spit. act. We could use that. <laughs> hey do you want to borrow my dog? Yeah, I get to keep all my favorite. There you go, there you go. I'm already going to put the beets too. We're going to put the beets in there, okay? Remember right. I, we talked about how that was just kind of a little secret ingredient? But the dogs can eat them. The dogs can have beets. It's very good. Again, it's beta carotene, soluble fiber, and just kind of let that cook for just a little while. Okay. Now, you're to the point that you take out whatever portion you want to feed to your dogs. I see. And okay. that's something you have to do your research on. Like, how much, how big is my dog? How much does my dog eat? That's one thing. Do I want to feed them totally this, this for a meal? Or do I want to put it on top of the kibble that they have? Those are oh. all choices that you can make. Oh. A lot of people love to cook and give a little bit of what they're eating to their dog. Maintain their kibble because... It stops you from doing the full research of 
exactly what minerals, exactly what vitamins and everything your dog needs. So for you guys, that might be the the optimum way to go. That's the way we go anyway. Yes, but we've got, on... got their bowl. But you know, she won't eat unless we're we, we'll come home and she hasn't eaten all day, and then she'll eat when we get home. What's mm -hmm. up with that? It's, they're social eaters. I mean, a social lot. Social eaters. Most of them are. If you have from the time that you had, you know, little bitty and everything, you fed them and y'all sat down to eat or whatever, that's usually what you're doing. You're fixing their food along, you know, about the time you're fixing yours too. Huh. They just learn that. Everybody, hey, let's everybody eat together. And that's a good thing to bring up because people say, if I feed my pet human food, they're going to beg. Every time I sit down at the table, they're going to beg. Every time they smell it. It's not the food, it's the routine that they're going for. So if you take that food, you put it in their bowl, yeah, <laughs> don't feed them from the table, because then they're going to come oh. to the table and want it every time you sit there. Uh -oh. But if it, yeah. I think we're <laughs> <laughs> now we know why Luna begs at the table. Yeah. There you go, yeah. So that's kind of something to remember. I mean, you know, we'd all do that. Yeah. Mike could say, hey, you're sitting down at the table, where's my food? <laughs> and that's kind of the same thing. Gotcha. Yeah, they're, they're just wanting to know it's time to eat. All right, so that's, you say, all right, I'm going to take out. And luckily, I already have a little bit for Luna. All right. So we're going to keep right on going. All right, taking that out. We're, now, going, we're going to switch over from dog switch. to human. That's exactly right. All right. All right. All right. That's what I'm interested in. Right. I'm not big on dog food. <laughs> well, babe, you know, there you go. You can get it. That's what you, that we learn in this show is that you can be big on dog food. You can. You and, can. Dog's gonna... and then you can say, I ate dog food today. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, well, if it had chopped tomatoes in it and cheese, you did. <laughs> That's right. There you go. All, All right. right. Here you go. That's Tomatoes. Good. Well, we've had some backstage catering that was... Could have Real qualified. Good. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Alpo brought us in there. Some. Oh. Either, either, either them or old Roy one. Yeah. You know, I, I thought that that was supposed to be good. I was always jealous of everybody backstage at the Opry and back there in the green room. Oh no, not not the Opry. The Opry's fine. Oh, okay. We talked about being catered at other places. I'm talking about being on the road. And oh, on the road. And oh, yeah. I, right. I've eaten some of them plastic green beans and they run out of oh. my ear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, chicken. Well, that... Chicken, one more time. <laughs> one more we've time. We've eaten chicken every way it can be cooked. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. come home off the road and told my wife, I said, throw the box spring and mattress off the bed. <laughs> I'm fixing to roost on the <laughs> Had too much chicken. Well, chicken is good for you, though. Not yeah. every meal. Yes, no, not every meal. Okay, so, yeah. so I'm glad I didn't cook chicken today. Are we uh, going to do uh, I actually want, cheese, I'm, or are we going to do that I'm on the end? I'm going to do that on the end. That's the garnish? That's the garnish, so you can have it or you don't have it. That's good. All right. There you go. All right, now we're going to start talking some spicy stuff that, that makes it all be chilly. Yeah. All right, we're going to start with one cumin. Now, do y'all like, I mean, do you even recognize what that taste is? Oh, yes, you get yeah. it at the Indian places. Well, curry yeah. is. Cur that's right, curry. Yeah, curry mm -hmm. is Let me see if I recognize smell, it. Smell that. Oh, that's what, yeah. <laughs> it's what chili is. I mean, really, when you smell chili. Yeah, I like that. That's it. Oh, that's good. A yeah, and that, that's good. Yeah, and that right there, your dog can actually have. Really? Mm-hmm. Cumin, turmeric. Um, they can have a little salt and a little pepper. So if you've forgotten accidentally, you know, salt and pepper, as long as it's not a lot, yeah. they can have a little bit of that. It's a smoky kind of. Yeah, tastes a little, tastes a lot like dental snuff. <laughs> <laughs> dental snuff, you say? <laughs> I'll take your word for that. <laughs> Uh, it's got about the same consistency, really. <laughs> well, it don't taste like it. Though. Okay, I like if, it if I look bad. over and yeah, okay. Um, and this, all of this is, to, <laughs> all of this is to taste. And then you're just gonna have to kind of have your spoon here on yeah. the side. Okay. And I like it. I like the taste of cumin, so I'll go ahead and too. put a fair amount in there. Yeah, yeah it's good for you too. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you got me yes. straightened out on curry and cumin. Yeah, I keep curry getting is totally confused. different there. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. He's into the onion powder. Now, th that gets you? All right. I'm not going to no kitchen contest after that. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. But not bad. That's yeah. good. Like I said, that's, that's the taste. When you think of chili, that's the, that is the taste. See, I always thought it was like chili powder. It's not. 
I'm going to... But it's not. Now, it's be that. careful. Those are the pepper flakes. Yes, I'm, I'm very familiar yeah. with them. I didn't want to get a <laughs> see for fresh. Okay. Uh, I don't want to be cooking the... Now, you yeah. can use fresh... We're not shortchanging the dog here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm gonna, only the enough. good stuff. If only. it ain't fresh, I ain't feeding it to my dog. Yep. Now, you took my thing. If, if we won't eat it, don't feed it to your dog. So see, that's kind of our little see, motto. Chili now you that's could use motto. you could use real onion, but because we're separating for the dog, usually you like to take the onion and brown it with the meat. Yeah. That's so that's I mean. why I didn't do that. If you don't mind that your onion is not brown and you can just chop it and put it in it, maybe at this thing because it's going to cook a while anyway. It'll get soft, but it just won't be brown. Yeah. You could do that. You could use real onion, but we're just going to use a little onion powder. Oh man. There you go. I just kind of eyeball it in there. I don't you? eyeball it. Yeah. yeah. That was a pinch. Right there, uh, I've seen uh, it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or a pinch and a half, maybe. Yeah. Okay, now here you go. This right here, did y'all actually I taste this? I, I tasted it. It's not hot. No. A lot of people think chili powder is what makes it. Chili powder is only a smoky type seasoning. It's huh. really not the heat. It tastes, uh, it tastes, uh, just trying to taste it kind of like paprika, which is up another ground up. Pepper. Exactly, exactly. Huh. See, he's smart. Uh, Man, I'm learning he, so much he here. Knows this what. is great. Yeah. All right, now here comes the heat. Oh, yeah. yeah. This okay. is your crushed red That'll pepper. That'll send you to the cramp mode about three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it will. And Maybe two. <laughs> so. What time of the night do y'all want to cramp? <laughs> yeah, well, the more you put in, you know, it, right. it, it starts backing it up, the more you put in. That's right. Uh, <laughs> don't, yeah. If you do what I'm doing. time your drugs here. I see. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, she, she's got a, I believe I can make it to breakfast. Oh, no, I, mean, I, I, I want you to at least make it out the door. Okay. <laughs> uh, if Man, you put good. this in your hand and yeah. you do that, for goodness sake, don't wipe your face or mm. your dog. Don't go, hi, honey, you know, and play with the dog after you do that yeah. because you need to wipe mm. off your hand. Even though it's not fresh chili, it's still going to burn your face or your dog's eyes or whatever else. Yes, whatever else. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. Whatever I else. I'm thinking something else <laughs> in my <opinion. laughs> I, I can tell you a story. Yeah, about. yeah me too. <laughs> Peppers. I have been drinking water. <laughs> okay. Oh, We're going to take a break and we'll be right back to see just how hot we made this chili. <laughs> I'm Dr. Kayla Mitchell at Paris Veterinary Clinic. I just wanted to give you a, a couple quick tips on vaccines. I know that a lot of us are worried about vaccinating our pets and are worried about over vaccinating. And so I just want you to remember that it's very important that we prevent diseases and we can do that with vaccines. There are some vaccines that are considered core vaccines. So in a dog, distemper, parvo combos, and rabies vaccines are core vaccines. But there are some lifestyle vaccines that they may need, like leptospirosis if they're going to be outside around other animals, um, kennel cough if they get boarded and groomed, Lyme vaccine depending on the area. Um, and in cats, we have a core vaccine that's called FBRCP, and then we also have our rabies vaccine, which again is core and required by law. Um, but there is a vaccine that they can also get called feline leukemia. And if they're gonna be outside, that's one of those lifestyle vaccines they should have. So um, what I would encourage you to do is take your pet to your veterinarian, talk about all the vaccines that they have and which are important for your pet to have. Fine too. There you go, and we're, and we're back with two hungry boys, <laughs> and they're going to try out the chili that we've made here today. Now, you can do, I mean, I don't know, it's sacrilegious if you're from Texas to do this, but I know a lot of people like it. They'll use, they'll put Fritos in the bottom of their chili and do like a Frito pie. Uh, they'll put, they'll mix macaroni in it, and all that's fine. But it's really better if you do that for your pet. Oh. Now that's a good like way. Cincinnati three-way. 
you know, where you have cheese and, and yeah, and yeah, pasta you put that. And, yeah, and absolutely. That. Here you go. Um, I'm going to give. I'm going to serve this to you the way that we would serve it. I would like to serve it to the dog by adding just a little bit of carbohydrate to it. Mm -hmm. Makes it a little bit more well-rounded of a meal for your pet, especially if that's what you're doing. Is that's their whole meal for that time. Now mm -hmm. I have Luna's right over here. We took some out. That's waiting on her, and she'll try that in a little bit. Great. All right. And so look forward to that. We'll pair it with a nice Pinot Noir. There you have right. it. There you go. I'm going to put just a little bit of rice in the bottom oh. of your bowl just so that you can try it. We want yeah. you to see what Luna's right. having. This is Goodlessville two way. There you go. Yes, yes. Absolutely. You know, it looks like Maggie's, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> it must be brown rice. It is. It's brown rice. That's better for you than white rice. That's for sure. It has no seasoning. I mean, really, it has no seasoning. I know that. Okay. <laughs> he got a hold of that. All right. There you go. Put that in there. Okay. That's a beet. That's good. That's I'll not an onion. That's, that's not a, a beet. Earth worm. It's not a worm. Though. That's not a worm. <laughs> Do we put a little bit you of this? put a little bit of cheese oh, on gosh, top of it. A little cheese. Cheese is perfectly con fine queso. for your pet. Oh, con queso. Con queso, exactly. Yeah. And this is chile con queso. Oh. Right. This is con carne floating around in that cheese. <laughs> there you right? go. Oh, we think we're smart. Okay, put you just a little bit of cheese on there. Yeah, yeah, I, got, I got bereft of a spoon here. Oh, I took right. your spoon. I am so sorry. I gotta wait for Slim. Yeah. All right. Slim, now we, you stirred this. I hadn't had nothing to do with it. Yeah. That's right. I just it's all on Slim. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try this too, because I haven't had this. All right. Should we see? All right. One, two, three. All right. Here we go. Mm. Eureka. Mm. That's good chili. It's real good. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Mm. That's better than not bad. Mm. I've had not bad. <laughs> not bad. bad. Oh, really good. Would mm. you eat that again? Yeah. That's I hope right. I don't have to. But I don't need some more chili. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> Once is enough. Yes, I would. I would. There you go. I would definitely eat your recipe eat again. This again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> there he goes, beets and all. Mm. Can you taste the beets? Because you just ate one. Does that taste like a beet? Mm -mm. No, it kinda, it's, it's just a little, kinda, it's a, a, a bare a little bit sweet a, or something like that. Kind of a shadow of a taste, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's good. We did this. I actually brought my little stove up front. That's a nice little stove you got there. Yep. That's an oster. It, it, it works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. But it's kind of to show everybody this is really a one pot, very easy thing to do. You can do it one pot. Just dump it all in the pot. Let it go. I'm you can do it if you're that. camping. You know, you can do it on your little little open, whatever those are called. I don't camp, so I don't know what that's called. What, what is that called? Stove. Fire. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> no. It's called, it called something. What? Isn't that called the little burner that you use out of the... The burner. Okay. Right. Whatever you burner. use... You're, no, don't give Mike an idea. <laughs> He'll be cooking gas. <laughs> All, right. All right, everybody. Thank you for being with me. Mike, oh, thank, thank you. you for being with me. Yeah, it was fun. Yes. And, and the payoff was worth it. Yes. Absolutely. And the education component. Strong. Mm. There you go. That's what yeah. it's all about. Just educating all of you pet lovers and pet owners of what's the best way and a healthy way to feed the whole family, not just you or not just your furry friends. Not just Mike Snyder. And not just Mike Snyder. <laughs> and I tell you what, everybody, I've been talking a little bit about, there he goes, a little bit about... <laughs> when I have this again, I'm answering there that. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Keep right on. He's a hungry boy. I'll get that. Go ahead okay. and talk, Big <laughs> I'm not planning on saying anything here. <laughs> has a Patreon channel and we'd love for you to join us there because right after the show I'm going to sit down with Mike and T-Slam and we're going to talk about all kinds of fun things going on with their career and and see if we can get them to perform a little something for us so if you're interested in getting some of these outtakes 
you got the outtakes today probably too. But <laughs> the interviews and extra recipes, please join us at our Patreon channel, Best Friends Kitchen. And I hope to see you back here again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.